Hello, everybody. Uh, before I start, uh, it's a great honor standing here in Athens on this beautiful event. Uh, thank you for considering me to be a speaker. And I would like to say special thanks to all of you organizing this beautiful event. Today, I will say a few words about how collaboration amongst shoppers in Gen Z and Gen Alpha will change social proof. But before we start, I have one question for all of you, so feel free to join me. And my question is, when you go to some, some new city and you face with a problem of hunger, you probably go to some restaurant, yeah? So how do you choose that restaurant? Based on what? Like, what, what does encourage you to go to some restaurant? Anybody? Okay, reviews, so like Google reviews or? Okay, because Google is a sponsor, yeah? <laughs> okay, Okay. so Google reviews, TripAdvisor. What? Large queues. Large queues, okay, that's also good, yeah? Okay, great, because you believe them, yeah? Yeah, we hope. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, keep, keep that in mind because we will come to this a little bit later on. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let me introduce myself, even though uh, he did a pretty good job, I will do it one more time. My name is uh, Lovro Mersic, I'm 18 years old and I come from small but beautiful country of Croatia. Uh, I founded uh, one interesting and innovative e-commerce plugin, which is called Collab Card. And ever since I was a little boy, I was always curious about how things work and why they work in a certain way. So I started like reading and watching different videos. <clears throat> Overall, I was gaining some knowledge. Later on, I was trying to use that knowledge to solve some basic problems. And at one point, I asked myself, what is my mission? Because at the end of the day, I think that we all should work on some mission and we should focus on our mission. And I realized that my mission, mission is to pr provide uh, solutions that can reduce uh, the complexity of everyday life for people on this planet. And I said this just to get a little bit more into my head and to get my perspective. Here I have QR codes for both my LinkedIn account and Twitter account. I prefer LinkedIn, so feel free to add me. Like I said, I will, uh, I will t talk today about how Gen Z and Gen Alpha are going to change social proof. So let me introduce you to those two generations. Gen Z uh, are all born between 1995 and 2009. So I am personally a member of Gen Z. Raise a hand if you are a member of Gen Z, maybe. Oh, nice. Great, 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 great. I didn't expect that. Great, great. I will not ask about Gen Alpha because... <laughs> Uh, okay, so Gen Z, uh, interesting generation. Uh, we are at the moment facing one big life transitions. We are finishing our formal uh, education, starting a job, uh, starting to live alone, earning first uh, incomes. But we had really specific childhood because we grew up during a recession, but on the other hand, we grew up with the development of smartphones, so we are smartphone natives. We are the ones who are basically fueling the whole digital transition, the e-commerce. We are the biggest customers of e-commerce. And even though we feel young, they are even younger. And those, those younger guys are Gen Alpha. So Gen Alpha, Gen Alpha are all those born after the 2010. So the oldest member of Gen Alpha is 13. And even though they don't physically have credit cards or press the purchase button, button they have some key roles in decision making uh, when it comes to purchasing an e-commerce well, because their parents listen to them and taking account that their parents are mainly those age between 20 and 50 so their parents are leading in terms of technology and economical stability but what's, what interests us are two things, and that is the spending power. So here you have spending power just for United States, uh, not whole world. And the estimated standing, spending power of Gen Z is around 360 billion, while on the other hand, the estimated spending power of uh, Gen Alpha is around 40 billion. Combined, that is more than uh, 400 billion, which is a lot. And while I was preparing for this presentation, I was searching for some data to give you a unique perspective of what we do and what we feel. And I came across really a lot of different statistics, but one especially caught my attention and, and was living rent-free in my head for several days. And that is this one. So some marketing experts did a research and they said that average American teen receives between four to 10,000 marketing messages per day. 
What does that mean? That means that in some perfect week, in terms of getting these messages, American teen will receive 70,000 messages. Like 70,000. Imagine 70,000 of anything. That's enormous. And then you as a brand or you as a web shop, you need to stand out among 70,000 messages. It's impossible. I mean, it's possible. But And because we are... He, uh, we, are, we are getting so much uh, messages, we just develop a blockade and we don't even feel when, you, when, we, when we get some advertisement on Instagram or some mail or, or something else. So question here is how to stand out. And it's not easy, it's not easy, it's complicated, but overall it just requires a bit different approach. And yeah, we get those 70,000 messages, but then at the end of the day we still buy. And question is what we buy? We buy brands. And yesterday here, it was a really nice presentation where it was said that brand is not only a logo or slogan or something else, that brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. And I agree with that. But I will go one step further. I think that brand is community. Yeah. So the best way to, if, if community is good, the brand is good. For example, today we took a family picture. And uh, that family picture is more powerful than any WordPress logo. And if you ask me what is WordPress, all of us here are WordPress. This conference is WordPress. And we are the ones who will support and who will bring new clients to WordPress. Same goes for everything else. And now when I'm talking about community, I will try to say a word or two about social commerce. So social commerce is something that has been brought up a few years ago. I mean, it, it has been here for several years, but lately it became more popular. And when you ask someone or when you go to Google and type uh, social commerce, the first 15 to 20 links will basically be all social commerce is when you buy something through social media. So, for example, through Facebook, through Instagram, to, to, to some other social media network. And even though all of that is true, social commerce is much more. And if you ask me, social commerce is actually a community. And then how, oh, just a moment, how I see social commerce is that at the front end, what we all see, is that, like social media shopping. But what we don't see and what is even bigger, what is behind every big front end is even bigger front back end. And in this case, back end is role of community and social proof. So without quality community, you don't have quality social media. You don't have the followers f for your brand on that social media. And to spread your community, you need quality social proof. And now I'll go to the beginning of presentation. So I ask you, how do you choose your restaurant? And let me rephrase what you said. So you basically said, I'm searching for some proof, but not any kind of proof. You are searching for social proof. And believe me, you are not alone because according to some uh, surveys, Gen Z and millennials are 99 more likely to rely on online reviews and social media when choosing a restaurant. So 99%, that's almost 100%. That's almost all of us. Let me just bring water, my throat is... <laughs> but believe me, when I said that restaurants are not only thing when social proof is a deal breaker. So for almost everything, like I don't, I don't have an example, but social proof is go or no go, go for me. So I use social proof in everything, and not only me, but my whole generation is using, using a social proof. Now I'll do a step away from the, everything I said before and tell you a little story of my own. So one day I was browsing through internet searching for, for one t-shirt. I really want one t-shirt, and uh, I found it, yeah. But I didn't buy it at the end of the day. Like, I did everything. I, 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 I added to cart, I went to check out and everything, but I didn't buy it. Okay. Anybody maybe have an idea why I didn't buy it? What was the deal breaker for me that time? It's not connected with anything I said before. Okay, no? Okay, okay, almost, but shipping, yeah, exactly, shipping. So shipping was almost twice as high as product itself. Like, and even though if somebody offered me $100 million, I would still not buy it because I'm not willing to pay for something twice as much than, than for the product itself. And at that moment, I just like thought, well, okay, this is a problem, but this is not a problem that I face. Like my whole generation is facing that problem. And like I said before, I think that I should reduce that complexity and that I should offer some solutions for those problems. So I started thinking, what can I do? 
And what can be done? Like, in, it didn't take me long to get an idea what do you do when you want to uh, reduce the shipping. You ask a friend to join you, and then you will share the shipping costs. But what happens then? From the perspective of the guy who is in charge of that shipping, of, of that uh, card, he needs to receive all kinds of info from other sites. So one, one guy will say, I want the size M blue hoodie. Another will say, will say I want the size L t-shirt with something written on it, and so on. So I just went from one problem to another, which is not good, and I connected them. So I'm, I created a big mess. But what's good is that I realized that those two problems are heavily connected, and that I could maybe offer some solutions which, which could solve both of them. So I again start, stopped and started thinking. What can be done? And not so long after, I, with the help of friends and some experts, I created the Collab Card plugin, which enables customers to shop together on a really easy way. But that's not, that's not the point here. Point here is that I saw that as a need, as a need of a whole generation. And then I realized, well, collaboration itself and shopping with, with, with someone together is not just something that will happen in future. It's something that is happen, happening now and on the large scale. And like uh, so just one. and like maybe you are scared as a web shop of collaboration, but you should not be. Collaboration is a beautiful thing, not only for shoppers, because basically for shoppers, collaboration is cost uh, cost cutting initiative. But from your perspective as a web shop, it might be, for example, that you are encouraging creation of small shopping groups that will transform to communities which is core of any modern e-commerce. Or maybe that the individual purchase will be higher because in a single purchase you will have uh, more, uh, more <coughs> shoppers. Or maybe the thing that consolidating some smaller packages will reduce uh, cost operational expenses. Like there is a ton of those benefits and you should not be scared. And you should search for solutions how to give us the most and the best and the most simple way of collaboration. But it also, I was also curious, like, what can I, what is also something that happens while we collaborate? Like, something that is not benefit or anything, like, I mean, not benefit, but something that happens in the background. And I started thinking, okay, collaboration, good. I'm getting some, link from, some links from my friends. But, and I also connected that with those 70,000 messages. And I soon realized that today, some traditional advertisement, and influencer endorsements are not as important as they were before. Moreover, today, the thing we value the most are recommendation from friends and family and authenticity. So remember this word, authenticity. And then I realized that we have a shift in trust and emphasis on authenticity. What are some other new products of collaboration? Well, first of all, review culture. So. Today is completely normal to leave a review after you eat something good or you buy something good or you have a good experience in something. Uh, and one proof of that is that almost half of Gen Z is leaving their review on social media like posting. And personally, I don't do that, but I often talk with my friends about my experiences. So I think almost whole generation is one way or another giving some kind of review or some kind of social proof is it that good or bad? It depends on you. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, review culture is definitely on its rise. On the other hand, user-generated content, which is strongly connected to reviews, is here. And when you ask someone what is user-generated content, you would get different answers. But user-generated content is actually authentic perspective on your business. So remember what I said uh, one slide ago, authenticity. And when someone gives you authentic perspective, it gives you the best ad the better ad than some influence and endorsement. And like user generated content is great, but what's even greater is when you support it. So try to support it. Like for example, you could, if you see some review, you could easily just screenshot it and put it in your social media. That way you're doing two good things. First of all, you are showing that you see little people, normal customers, but at the same time, you are encouraging others to do that because some other guy will say, look, they put some random guy on their social media, they are promoting them. Try to support user-generated content. Now we'll try to circle everything that I said before and finally get, give you an answer of on how will we change the social proof itself. And then, I, I also was thinking about that before, of course. So I started thinking, 
you know what's crowdfunding? So crowdfunding, for example, if you heard about Kickstarter, is when Kickstarter is a platform that where people, crowd, community, is founding some brand business idea. Basically, the crowd is founding with money something. Then on the other hand, you have maybe Wikipedia, where you are founding the base with information. Then I thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could just connect social proof with crowdfunding? But I would not use the crowdfunding, uh, the founding, I would use crowdsourcing. That's how I got to crowdsource social proof. So crowdsource social proof is definitely something that should be considered as future of social proof. It's not that the social proof itself would be changed, but our perspective on it will be. And community members will actively contribute uh, with their opinions, experiences, and feedbacks on products uh, or brands, which is excellent for you. And on the other hand, you are the ones who need to develop some kinds of rating and uh, reviews to allow, allow that community uh, to provide feedback. But what I like the most are all of the strengths uh, of uh, crowdsource uh, social proof. So first of all, you see this pointer right here. So you see one picture, and I see other picture. We both think that our picture is most accurate, but it's not. But if we combine our pictures, we get more accurate and more complete picture. Now, think like this. You have some product, and you're getting one review of from one side, and then you're getting another. So crowdsource social proof offers a diverse uh, representation from different people, from different backgrounds, different preferences, different uh, behaviors, and so on. Overall, crowdsource social proof is the only thing to give you a complete picture of your product and most accurate picture of your product. Uh, on the other hand, to do anything today, you need to be, I mean, you need to follow the trends to be trendy. And I, I agree that that is really not simple. That's extremely difficult. But you can help yourself, and not you, but others can help you. So crowdsource social proof is continuously going to get new members, and those new members will join and contribute. The social proof will evolve over time, and it will be up to date, which is great for you. And now if you use uh, those two strengths, you have pretty good chances of standing out among 70,000 messages. But last but not least, multiple community members endorsing a product or service through positive rent, uh, ratings and reviews builds trust and credibility, but not any kind of credibility, authentic credibility. And what we said before is that the authenticity is key in gain, getting to us. Like, <coughs> Okay, so last but not least, uh, accessible information and community engagement. Uh, Crowdsource social proof really is accessible. And it, it's up to you also to, 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 to offer the most simple way of us getting to that proofs. And like I said, you need to encourage that. It's up to you. But also community members uh, actively participating in discussions. I'll give one example also for WordPress. So I know that there are several Facebook groups and Reddit groups where people sometimes have a problem and then the community is the one who solves that problem. And that's great. And that's something that gives additional value to, 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 to WordPress. And buyers are, of course, uh, empowered uh, with the insights they need to make uh, confident choices based on collecti collective wisdom of the crowd. Yeah. And like, I'll go to the beginning, how to stand out among 70,000 messages and how to get to us, because I know that's a big problem, not only for small brands, but also, for example, for WordPress, because WordPress is having a tough times in getting Gen Z as uh, their. So it's like if you ask any of my peers, it's more likely that they will know, for example, Shopify or some other uh, brands than WordPress. And I know that you are having a tough time. But what you can do, you just need to listen to us and offer us solutions. Or if there are some solutions, try to. Uh, get the solutions and to support those solutions. Uh, I think that I was a little bit faster and I was a little bit <laughs> uh, not good with time management. So please uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Yeah.
All right. That was impressive. I'm yeah, not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, was, I was a little bit. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I was wow. A little bit. <laughs> so this is from... Uh, this is from uh, everyone. Thank it's you, a great thank you. It's from thank the OwardPress team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then we just want you to keep doing what you've been doing. Thank you, thank you. Big round of applause, everyone. Big round of applause. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. You've all eaten. Just do it. All right. So... Uh, I think I'll start with my questions again, because I don't know, I'm curious. Um, you're over 17, you're still in school, you've done this research, you've created this application. When do you sleep? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, uh, they said that there's no such a thing as a lack of time, there's just a better organization. So, you know, if you organize your time well, you can do a lot of things. Do you do seminars for time organization? Can you teach me how to do this? I'm 32 yeah. and I still have issues. No. For enough money. You know, I'm can. very serious about this question too. Yeah. Um, all right, so a uh, second question that's a little bit more serious. Well, the previous one was actually quite serious, <laughs> to be honest. But um, you mentioned uh, that uh, the generation, uh, the earlier generations, alpha, Z, alpha, and mm -hmm. so forth, they don't, uh, okay, so they don't care about uh, TV commercials or things that are like really commercial and expensive and I don't know, mm -hmm. trying to sell you something, maybe magazine ads, mm -hmm. they don't care about those either. But uh, why don't they care about social media influencers? They're like the same age, yeah. they're young, they're still in school. Mm -hmm. why, why aren't they? Well, let me ask you a question. So. You see an influencer and you know that he's getting paid. He won't promote a product without getting paid. And oh, on the other hand, you have a really good friend who buys some products and then recommends it to you. Who will you believe? Yeah, I picked a friend. <laughs> but what? Yeah, I picked a friend. No, yeah, no, no. You're, yeah. right, so, you're right. So same works for us. We, we, oh, just, we know that the, the influencers are getting paid. And no matter how good the influencers are, they need to live from something. And that something are sponsorships. So I will believe a friend before uh, inf influencer. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Does anyone here disagree with that? No hands. I guess you're right. Bravo. All right, so let's take some questions from the audience now. Right, oh, that was quick. Uh, one moment, the microphone is coming your way, so you can ask your question. We can all hear you nice and clear. It's like the delivery rider when it's arriving, you're not understanding which side of the arriving. Okay, so hello, nice to meet you. Uh, first, I want to congratulate to, your, to you, uh, to you. Because you are so, so young. I'm 21, actually. And when I see people that are younger, uh, that are young, I also, I also Generation Z. Uh, and I started in, in WordPress when I, when I was like 16 or 15. So I'm the younger person, the, as far as I know, the, in the Italian community. So mm -hmm. I'm so happy when I see people like me. So congratulations, keep going. Thank you, thank you. And now, uh, what I wanted to say was that, actually you said before that uh, you seen like WordPress was too hard to use. I actually, my experience never heard uh, from any people also like, 18, 17, 16, never heard about that. Uh, what they have always heard is that people think that they are too hard because they, they see the HTML code. And they said, oh, now I, I don't want to go to do that. Mm -hmm. So why you say that it's, uh, it's, um, it's too complicated? Thank you. So, sorry for this uh, maybe uh, yeah. off-topic question. No, no, no. Uh, so uh, what was that? A few days ago, uh, I was at the biggest uh, the university in Croatia, which is called the electric, which does that. Uh, so they, they they produce developers at the end of the day. Yeah. And I I asked them, so what do you? Why do you don't? I, I I'm personally not the expert for for the, the things. I just get what people told me. But they said that they it's not just it's too complicated and and things uh, like that. But they prefer other things, and that is exactly why, for example, Gutenberg is developing to, to, to acquire our generation, and to, 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 to get to our generation. What do you mean with more complicated? I, I think that it's easier today, uh, and when, if you go now to YouTube and, say, and, and type how to start a web shop, the, there will be more tutorials about how to start it on Shopify than on WooCommerce. And it's maybe easier to learn 
than to learn WordPress, if, you, if that satisfies your, your answer. I don't want to take your thunder here, but um, I'd like to add to that, that uh, with WooCommerce and with WordPress, you have so, so many options, so, yeah. so many plugins, whereas with Spot, the Spot, like, uh, Spotify, Nothing against WooCommerce. Uh, my plugin is on WooCommerce only at this moment, so I support WooCommerce. Let's go, WooCommerce. But yes, of course. But it's I'm just, just saying uh, like what I hear from other people, from people my generation. Yeah. Yeah, so we all want to make it better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Because we all love it yeah, and yeah, use it I'm, every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, any other questions from the audience? Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right in front of me. Terribly sorry for that. One microphone here, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, grab some I'm here, I'm here. First of all, I really find your idea uh, very, very good and uh, very pioneer. But uh, I'm not sure about uh, how you imagine the collaborative uh, crowd, crowd uh, source collaborative uh, proof. Mm -hmm. uh, proof. Is it like um, in independent networks or in a, a certain platform? It's an, an idea or are you planning to create a platform for No, it's, it's not an idea, it's just the perspective. It's, it's just how we are going to look at social proof. We will not look at single one review or something. We will try to collaborate all of the all of those to found one uh, big social proof, you know? So there is not like a platform, something to do that. Just our perspective and our position from where we look on that. Okay, thanks. Yeah. thanks. Next question. Oh, right up there. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm circling back. Kind wait, of wait, 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 wait. I don't see you. Oh, I'm up here. Okay, well, corner. Uh, sorry, yeah. So, circling back two questions to um, your comments on influencers, uh, and uh, I think what you said made a lot of sense. You know, obviously, you're going to trust your friend more and your 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 mm -hmm. more personal recommendations. Uh, but do you feel that your generation has perhaps? Uh, strengthened that view because I, I mean as an adult I have that view too um, and I'm sort of boomer generation almost uh, yeah. Gen, X. Gen X yeah thanks that's generous um, uh, like, does that have something to do with the fact that you as a generation are receiving 70,000 marketing impressions per week and you ha do you feel that as a generation you've developed a resistance to marketing in general okay Okay, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's the question. Well, Sorry. not to general, but <laughs> okay. Uh, I, like I said, those 70,000 messages are basically some traditional uh, and, and old-fashioned uh, marketing messages and or influencer endorsements. And yes, we raised some resistance to that. That's why you need to find new approaches to get to us. Yeah. And, and, and in order to, 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 to acquire more customers, the best way to do this is through community. So you need to... Uh, uh, encourage your community to do that. So, uh, follow-on question, if I may. So, the, the, your resistance seems to me like it is a lack of trust, or, or it's founded in a lack of trust. Okay. And then if we, as uh, not just the WordPress community, if the marketing world as a whole starts infiltrating our communities, does that not mean that you will eventually get to the point where you lose trust in your own communities as well? I mean, that super philosophical question there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But the, I, we are in I Greece, you know, land of philosophers, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, to put a little more context on it, though, um, you, uh, your generation has raised those barriers, that, those resistance levels, I think, probably faster than any generation mm -hmm. in history. Um, and I wonder if that isn't going to be the, exactly the same for whatever marketing trick comes next. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, no. I suppose my, my concern here is that we're starting an arms race. It's always been an arms race, but we're really accelerating it now. No. Uh, less a question, more of a comment. Yeah. Okay. So if you ask someone 10 years ago how will marketing look today, they, will, they would probably not give you an accurate answer. And that's why I cannot give you an accurate answer right now. So we can only predict or try to predict and go with the flow. All right. Next question from the audience, please. Oh, this sir right up here. Of 
quite a few questions. Thank you. Hello. Hello. First, congratulations for achieving many things in, at your at a very young age. I think sky's the limit. Thank you. From there, so uh, people for, form communities, uh, big or small. Do you think that ethical consumption, that I believe is uh, getting bigger, will get in the way of forming view communi bigger communities and I don't know, in the near future, maybe make reviews seem obsolete, like people will start uh, buying products ba based on their uh, ethical... Based on their? Rather, um, on their beliefs. Okay. Or on what is ethical, rather than, oh, that person or my friend was uh, happy with that product. Could you repeat one more time, please? Excuse me? Uh, could you repeat one more time? I didn't... Uh... Yeah, do you think that uh, people in the okay. future okay. Will, will start buying... Uh, stop or stop? Start buying okay. products based on their beliefs and... Uh, what, 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 what does their, their belief mean? On their ethical, on the thinking that, oh, this product uh, is more environmental friendly or... Oh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. ...is better than me, rather than uh, based on uh, critics and reviews from friends or family. But uh, those two things go really, really well along with each other because you will get a recommendation, look, this product is environmentally friendly and you, you support that. So those two things will probably go with one with another, you know? Because... What? Oh, no, it if you understand what I want to say to you. Yes, yes. And, and maybe, yeah, there will be some uh, situations when one will go against the other. But as I said, that the beliefs, you are surrounded with people who have same beliefs as you pretty much. So those recommendations will go with your beliefs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions from the audience? I don't see, it's pretty bright. Uh, yeah. There we go, that's much better. <laughs> um, no, nothing. All right, I need a really big, because we're not that many people and we really should be, a really big final round of response here for Lodvo. <laughs> bravo, man, bravo. <laughs>